Hello my fellow gamers, Gamer 64 here, and today I've got another episode of This Game is Weird. Today, we are going to be taking a look at Amazing Island. I bought this game at a game shop for four dollars. Four singular dollars, guys, for this amazing freaking awesome as crap game which i am so excited to show you guys because this game is very 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 awesomely like deadly very awesomely cool like you guys will see later on when we get into the monster development why there's so many varies behind that this game is good but it's super weird i am so excited for you guys to see this game the main um thing about this game it's kind of like a pokemon style thing mixed with mario party that's what it says on the back of the box anyways um you create this unique monster to help you battle in these mario party style mini games so the monster that you can create could perhaps um potentially um of course uh, compete in one of these events that is showing on the screen right now and since I don't have a monster yet which I will later and he's awesome he is my baby um it gives you just kind of one of the default monsters from the front of the case it give it gave me like the rock dog looking thing but basically in this mini game you hit back and forth a fireball and try to knock your opponent into the lava as fast as possible so this game is like a collectathon monster creation game and a party game at the same time. Like, that's really unique and actually really cool. And to be completely honest, the monster creation in this game, from what I've seen, the little that I've seen, is actually really good. And it kind of... I don't know, it gives like something... That not many games that I know of have that on the GameCube or PS2 or Xbox. Like, there's not many creature creation games. Like, there's games like The Sims where you create a person. But from what I know of, there's not really any, like, creature creation games. And this is a very cool, like, creature creation game. And if you guys can find this, I would suggest it to you. I mean, it's weird, sure. I mean, look at the thing in the bottom right of that screen. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the game's weird, but it's really fun from what I was able to play in this 20 minutes, you know? And it's just awesome. Like, seriously, I was so excited to jump into this game and just start playing it. Like, you have no idea, guys, because as soon as I saw this in the game store, and I was like, and it said that I could create my own monster, I was like, yes, <laughs> give it, give it over. Sorry for the lack of commentary, I got distracted. Um... Yeah, look at that little thing in the bottom right of the screen. He's very weird. And by the way, I named my character Jin. So, yeah. My character's name in this game is Jin. J-I-N. Jin is actually one of my favorite names of all time. I don't know why, but I love Jin from um, Tekken. I love Jin from Dragonauts the Resistance, uh, which is an anime. I don't know. I love all characters that are named Jin. And I just named this guy Jin because I thought of the name randomly when naming this guy. So, he is named Jin. And Jin is like one of the coolest names ever. I love him. Yeah. Um. So, I wish that I would hurry up and get to the character, or the monster creation. Um, this game at the very beginning gives you a lot of explanation about what's going on on this island and, like, the character and everything. Uh, that's the main, like, the guy in the bottom right of your screen is the main, like, protector and overseer of, um, Amazing Island. So, he is a pretty important character, if I do say so myself. But, uh, yeah, the game takes the liberty of kind of taking you through the story of the game and just kind of 
letting you see what this world is like. Because to really get into a good game, you need to know its story. So here's like a cutscene thing, if you want to call it that. Again, this game is weird because it has like little darkness, like teethy things. I don't know how. I don't know what else to call them. But um, yeah, basically, darkness has taken over this island, and they don't really have a way to stop them because for some reason, uh, these little dudes cannot fight off the darkness and just all this other stuff. But apparently, as a human. You can fight them off, and you can save the day using your monster, which we do create later, and he's awesome, and he is my, he is my little monster, and he's awesome. He is a very cool monster, guys, like, trust me, my monster is so freaking cool. My monster is definitely one of the coolest monsters in video game history, I'm just saying. Well, you guys should have seen how excited I got when I was able to create my monster. Because the way that the monster creation works for your first monster, you don't get to create him per se. You answer um, quiz questions. So, like, for example, one of them was... Um, when you wake up in the morning and you see the sun, what do you think? Um, do you go back to bed? Do you say it's a beautiful day? Blah, blah, blah. And then, depending on those different answers that you give for the quiz questions, then that will determine what kind of monster is created for you. And when I saw my monster come through that little, uh, like, mirror in the background, oh, I was so happy and excited. My monster is so cool. Just wait until you guys see it. Um, I've actually not done this style of recording in a long time. Because it's kind of inconvenient, I'm actually recording a voiceover onto the gameplay. Because I wasn't, I was just playing this game for fun for myself. But I ended up recording it because I was thinking like, hey, what if this game is weird? I mean, it probably is because it has monsters on the cover that look absolutely awesome and ridiculous. So I was figuring, this game might be a little weird. So why not record it? Uh, so I started recording it. I wasn't really thinking that I was gonna have to do, like, commentary or anything. And then the game ended up being extremely weird and extremely good. So I just kept the recording, and now I'm doing a voiceover of it. So, uh, very, very cool. But yeah, this is actually working out very well. Uh, normally when I used to do voiceovers in the past, they didn't really work... They didn't work all that well. Like, go back to the first few episodes of Shadow of the Colossus and, um, Fury, and you guys will- Well, the entire series of Fury, actually. I did voiceovers for it, I believe. I think I did. I'm trying to think. Yeah, the entire Fury series was voiceovers. So go back to there, and you guys will notice that, like, sometimes when I say things, it won't match up to what's actually happening on the screen. Um... So, the eh, voiceovers can be very helpful, like, when you're doing, like, in-depth projects, but for, for gaming videos such as this, I honestly wouldn't recommend it, because it's not that, it's not the most viable system. Like, use OBS, hook up your headset or microphone to OBS, and it will record automatically along with the game and sync them up perfectly. So... It's not always going to be accurate, but if you do have to do a voiceover for a gaming video, try not to say, like, specific things. Like, for example, don't say, oh, the menu just popped up. Because that is extremely specific, and if it doesn't line up exactly where the video was when you started recording, then it's going to get messed up and it's going to look sloppy, you know? So try not to be very specific if you do decide to do a voiceover for a gaming video. If you guys have a YouTube channel of your own. Uh, there you go. There's Ultra Gamer's tips for the day. <laughs> As you can see, at the current moment, my monster is being generated. At first, I thought that was my monster. And I was going to say, like, my monster is all bony and cool and cool looking. 
but actually the game is drawing out your monster and it's kind of drawing all his features like that's his hands so he's got like the claw thing going on uh right there he's got like some claw feet and like some spikes coming off the back of his hips and the game just does an awesome job of doing this like i love the way that the game showed this off it looks so freaking cool guys so there was my monster created and all done drawn out everything like that and then he drops from this slut from the ceiling in this little like fruit slash egg thing and guys just wait wait until he hatches he's not as awesome he's not as awesome as he will be later but look at him look at him he is so gorgeous literally at this moment i was freaking out when i was playing this game i was like this is going on the channel i am doing a video of this game and nobody is going to stop me nobody's going to know what this game is but i don't care because i know what it is now and i have missed out on this game and i regret it and then i get to name him oh Oh yeah, for some reason the game ended up deciding to put wings on my monster's head and traffic lights on his knees. I don't know why it did that. Like, I tried to adjust them and it didn't really work out properly, so I just deleted both of them. But here's my painstaking process trying to go through the, um, through the customization. Uh, the customization is decent, but the game seems to have a problem with lining up the um like where you put the part in the mode that you're seeing right now versus on the actual monster the game seems to have a problem with lining everything up properly and making it look proportional so i don't know what's up with that but maybe the game will kind of fix itself later on it's too it was too early to tell So yeah, as you can see, I did not really know how to work the customization. My monster kind of looks like a pterodactyl in a way, but uh, he, he's a dragon, I think. It said that he's dragon class when I like go into his info. So I guess he's a type of dragon. Oh, I didn't name him yet, did I? Not in game. Yeah, I haven't named him yet in game. I think his name that I gave him is pretty darn cool. I would like to think. See, like, I'm trying to place those traffic lights. What? That's just boggling my mind. Why would a monster need traffic lights? Doesn't even make sense. Like, why would the game just automatically think, Hey, you know what this monster needs? Some freaking traffic lights. <laughs> Literally what the game was thinking. And I don't get it. But yeah, almost done with character creation. So yeah, as you can see, the game doesn't really do a good job of lining up the parts with the other body parts, and it's kind of, it's kind of this big process. So, yeah, it's not the best creation system in the world, like, honestly, Spore has a way better creation system, like, obviously. I mean, this is limited to console. I know that Spore has had games on consoles and handhelds before. But the PC version of Spore just does character creation, like, a lot better than this game. But this game is still very good with the creation. Like, I was very pleasantly surprised. I was expecting it to be a complete and utter disaster. And it was very good from what I tried out. So, I was pleasantly surprised by that. 
Uh, Spore definitely does it better, though. But that's kind of to be expected. I mean, in a way, Spore's on the PC and everything. I was able to give him a fin, so that's pretty cool. He's, like, aquatic-ish now. Yeah, and like in this part, for example, I tried to center the fin on his back, but it just wouldn't center. Like, no matter where I put it, it wouldn't center on his mid-back, you know? So that was like a little annoying as well. Like, if you're going to show that it's centered on the, like, part view where you're able to put stuff, then make it be centered on his back. You know, I just kind of gave up to save time in the video and to let you guys see some more of it but uh yeah i ended up moving on i didn't give him a horn i was going to uh yeah i was gonna give him a horn but he already kind of has horns if you guys can see he has the big like crest on the back of his neck and then i got to color him so that was freaking awesome he looked really good like that but he looks even better like that <laughs> um the green and gray and blacks and everything he just looks so cool and i'm so proud of my monster I'm so proud of him. And then at this moment, I started thinking, like, you know what would be awesome? If it went kind of like a Pokemon Silver approach. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, my monster is being named. I named him Ikaro. Or Ikaro or something like that. Ikaro, Ikaro, however you want to pronounce it. But um, I started thinking, like, well, what if this game went a Pokemon Silver approach with it? and let my monster follow me you know when i walked around and everything and then watch what happens guys when i walk out of this cave watch what freaking happens this blew my mind so hard and it literally cemented the fact that i will be playing this game a lot more on the channel be it a let's play, a mini let's play, let's mess around in, anything. I will play this game on this channel, and it will be awesome. <laughs> so there I view the stats of Ikaro, or Ikaro, Ikaro, however you want to pronounce it. Again, that's pretty much free to interpretation. I have no really, I have no real way of how to spell Ikaro's name, or how to pronounce Ikaro's name. I'm going to always pronounce it Ikaro, but you guys can pronounce it how you want. But, uh, when I decide to leave the cave, what happens then blew my mind. Just watch, guys. Are, are you watching? Are you paying attention to your screen? You guys better be paying attention. If my dumb self would move out of the cave... I was trying to edit my monster again because I learned that it was a water type, apparently. Um, I was trying to change his color to a blue... But I couldn't seem to figure out how to do that. But now, when I move out of the cave... Your monster in the game follows behind you! That is literally such a cool mechanic and such a good way to portray that this monster is your partner and that he's yours. He isn't just in a Pokeball. He isn't just stuffed in your pocket and forgotten about. You have this giant monster beast and partner and friend following behind you at all times. And it is awesome, guys. I cannot stress how much the game impressed me when I saw that I can have a giant water lurking dragon following behind me. Mind freaking blown. And this video is over, guys. Like, this video is over. Like, seriously. This game is great. There will definitely be more of it, and I am super, 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 super excited to play more of this for you guys. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video and this episode of This Game is Weird, then please be sure to leave a giant like. And remember to keep on gaming, stay amazing, and I will see you guys next time.